My name is Daniel. I am 17 years old and I live in South Africa. This story takes place around two years ago. My best friend, I don't want to mention his name for privacy, and I always get up to a lot of mischief when we're together. The trouble we cause ranges from ding-dong ditching to public vandalism. There have been a few instances where we have been chased by the police. My point is that we cause trouble and have fun doing it. When my friend and I were about 15 years old, we went to my aunt's farm in the Karu. She stayed in her house, which was actually very nice. But my friend and I camped outside in a tent one night when we were brying, which is the South African version of a barbecue. My aunt told us about a house on top of a large hill which was abandoned and supposedly haunted, and she showed us where it was. My friend and I looked at each other, and we both knew what we were going to do the next day. We were going to investigate this haunted house. The next morning, him and I grabbed our backpacks and packed the essentials for an adventure. A pocket knife, a torch, warm clothes, some snacks, etc. We told my aunt that we were going to go for a bike ride and she said, Okay, just be safe and stay out of trouble. I don't want to hear any complaints from other people on the farm about your mischief. We assured her that we would behave. So we grabbed the bikes and our bags and off we went. It was a really hot day so riding the bikes to the hill was exhausting. We were too tired to ride the bikes up the hill, so we left them at the bottom and walked up. Once we got to the top and had a clear view of the house, I felt nauseous and sat down for a while so I could rest. The house was very small, only one story tall. Eventually, I felt better and we walked to the front door of the house. To be honest, you wouldn't think it was abandoned. None of the windows were broken and it looked stable. We couldn't see inside though because the windows were boarded up from the inside of the house. We were really curious so my friend and I did something very, very stupid. We threw rocks at the window so we could remove the boards and get inside. This hill was isolated so we didn't think anyone would see us and this house was also abandoned. So we also thought that no one would care. Once all the windows broke, we removed the boards by kicking and punching them down. And one by one, all the boards were down. I don't know why, but for some reason or other, we decided to break all the windows and take down all the boards instead of just one. It was probably just fun to break stuff as a dumb teenager. We crawled through one window and since all of the boards were down and light came in, we could see everything very clearly. And the layout of the house was very simple. The living room was connected to the kitchen and there was one bedroom and one bathroom. What we also saw confused us. All of the cupboards and drawers were filled with utensils, plates, bowls, pans, books, paintings, etc. Yet this place was supposed to be abandoned. Once again, my friend and I made a dumb decision. We started throwing rocks at the cupboards and emptied all the drawers and broke plates. What I'm saying is that basically, we completely trashed the place. In one of the drawers, we found cool board games, books, and cards and stuff. And then we went into the one and only bedroom in the house and found a picture of a family in the one drawer. There was an old man, an old woman, a young boy and a young girl who was in a light green dress. She had very long dark brown hair. The weird thing was that the young girl wasn't near everyone else. The old man and woman and the young boy stood together and were smiling, but the girl was off to the left and far back. We thought that was weird. We also saw that something was written on the back of the picture. My friend thought it would be funny if he tore the picture into pieces. This made me uncomfortable as I thought that the picture looked like it held emotional value to whoever owned it. That was my train of thought but I decided to keep quiet because I didn't want to be a party pooper. So I just said, go for it, dude, and laughed. 
He went on, and as he started tearing the picture, we heard faint singing coming from outside. It was the voice of a girl. My friend and I both looked at each other and were both pretty weirded out. My friend told me to go to the front window and have a look. I was freaked out, so I didn't want to, but eventually my friend forced me. I slowly went towards the window and had a look. There was in fact someone outside, and they were singing. That was already weird, but what sent shivers down my spine was that the person singing was a young girl who was wearing a green dress. She had dark brown hair exactly like the girl in the picture. How can this girl who was around 11 years ago be here singing in front of me when there was a picture of her from 1977? I was frozen in fear. I snapped out of it when I heard my friend whisper to me, Dude, what's going on? What do you see? I turned around and crawled on all fours back to my friend trying to be as quiet as possible. I told him what I saw and at first he didn't believe me and said, that ain't even funny, bro. I assured him that what I was saying was true, but he remained stubborn and said, take a picture and I'll believe you. I asked why he didn't look for himself, and he said he didn't want to because he was also kind of freaked out. I obliged and went back to the window. I took out my phone and opened the camera. As I was about to take the photo, she stopped slowly turned around and let out an insanely loud scream while pointing at me. And then she jumped backwards off the hill. I dropped my phone and ran back to my friend. I felt so nauseous that I vomited. My friend was asking, bro, what happened? What was that scream? Why are you vomiting? It took me a while to get a hold of myself and I told him what I saw and to my surprise, he believed me. We stayed in that house for a long time, too scared to go outside in case that girl was still there. We sat there silently for about two hours until we heard a car drive up to the house. We heard the car door open and a loud male voice yell, we know you two are in there, get out before we come in. It was the cops. We didn't know what to do, we worked on a plan to get out of this mess and we said that as the cops come through the front door, we run out the back window and go around the house and make a run down the hill. So we did. The cop kicked down the front door and we hopped out the back window. We sprinted around the left side of the house and made a beeline down the hill for our bikes. Once we got our bikes, we got away quite quickly because the cops turned off their car and had to restart it. On our way back to my aunt's house, we didn't talk once. Both of us were traumatized about the whole situation. Later that day, we talked to my aunt again about the house. She admitted that what she said about the house wasn't 100% true. Her original story was just to scare us. The house wasn't abandoned, but it just wasn't being used. She said that it was a holiday house that foreigners could rent out for their visits to South Africa, but no one used that house because everyone claimed it was haunted. It was indeed an old house that people used to own from a long time ago. An elderly couple lived there from roughly 1940 to 1977. She told us that in 1977, that elderly couple had their grandchildren stay there for a weekend. There was a young boy and young girl. The young girl had a mental illness, bipolar disorder. In reports, it is said that the girl murdered everyone in that house and then committed suicide by jumping off the hill. My friend and I stayed up all night talking about that day. We both realized that the girl we saw was the girl my aunt told us about. To this day, we have never told anyone about this story.